I have always considered the conversation of global warming to be pretty important. At this point, a lot of people understand global warming's consequences, and they're pretty obvious, but there are a handful of people that don't necessarily agree with this global warming concept. We have all seen crazy articles or videos saying the arguments trying to disprove global warming, and they all tend to end on a note that the people trying to disprove climate change's existence are heavily denying the way the world is. For example, there is a relatively questionable clip of Ben Shapiro, a conservative political commentator, talking about what happens if water levels rise, and another clip where Hollywood actor Jennifer Lawrence says climate change is pretty impotent. Not really, but we'll get to that later. So, out of my own curiosity, I want to investigate and understand what exactly is going on in these people's minds, you know, what makes them not want to believe in global warming, and what exactly causes this type of denial behavior. The first thing I can look to when it comes to this kind of behavior is cognitive dissonance. According to a variety of sources you can google, cognitive dissidents can be generalized as a contrast between two conflicting beliefs, attitudes, or values. This can include what someone says, what someone does, and the thoughts that are considered general consensus. The term cognitive dissonance was coined in 1957 by an American psychologist named Leon Festinger after he held an observational study. He investigated a cult that believed the earth was going to be flooded. Some members eventually realized they were simply wrong, but there were other members more committed to the belief that tried to reinterpret evidence to prove that the belief was still correct. It is pretty clear that the earth hasn't been flooded, you know, as I'm alive and making this video, so it's easy to point out now that what the cult believed in is just not true. So what made those committed believers want to continue to defend themselves? And going back to the YouTube clips of, you know, people trying to deny climate change, what makes Jennifer Lawrence's and Ben Shapiro's clips so controversial and also funny? The only way we can actually learn anything from these supposedly funny clips is to actually take a look at them. So let's take a look at Jennifer Lawrence's clip first to see if we can find any sign of cognitive dissonance. Information. When the director was asked about the film, why it was so dark, he said it's a mad time to be alive. And there's certainly a sort of end of days feeling about it. There are many people in America who would say, you know, perhaps it's truer there at the moment than anywhere else. I mean, what are your thoughts about the changes that would happen in your own country over the last year or so? It's scary. Um, you know, it's this new language that's forming, it's, I, I don't even recognize it. I, it's, um, it's also scary to know it's been proven through science that human activity, uh, that climate change is due to human activity and we continue to ignore it and the only voice that we really have is through voting. The context here is that she's being asked about how she feels about her and other countries going through climate disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, etc. And to that, Jennifer responds, It's crazy, you know. It's this new language that's forming I don't even know. I don't even recognize it. It's scary to know it's been proven through science that we continue to ignore the change caused by human activity. And, <laughs> you know, the joke of the video is that there's an article afterwards showing Jennifer flying on a private jet that's, you know, clearly not environmentally friendly. The funny part of the video is good and all, but it is the way Jennifer responds to the interviewer that we can learn something from. We can see that she seems really uncertain about what she wants to say, hesitating a lot before each phrase. It is also noticeable that some of her sentences are borderline unfathomable, and Yes, I'm referring to that, it's a new language that's forming, whatever words came out of her mouth at that time. The content of the words Jennifer is saying doesn't really stray too far off the common knowledge of how we think of climate change today, so we can infer that she really hasn't thought about the dichotomy between what she is saying and her actions too much. 
since Jennifer is an actor, it's also pretty clear to assume that she's been used to living a rich lifestyle, and we all know that that's not sustainable. What's really happening in the clip is that Jennifer has just realized that she really has no right to criticize anyone for not taking action against climate change, and that, you know, maybe she's a part of the problem too. I would classify this as cognitive dissonance as what's been shown in the clip matches up pretty well with the whole definition we discussed earlier. Okay, let's take a look at the next clip of Ben Shapiro on rising sea levels. No need for context for this one, it's just pretty hilarious. So let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, that all of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say, five feet over the next hundred years, say ten feet by the next hundred years, and it puts all the low-lying areas on the coast underwater. Right, which let, let's say all of that happens. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? Just one small problem. Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman! Shapiro is pretty assertive when it comes to argumentation, and that's what makes this clip really funny. He's so confident that people just make their money back and buy another house to the point that he's oblivious to the fact that climate change's damage is literally irreversible once it goes too far. That's all important stuff when it comes to the argumentation side of things, but is Shapiro's behavior considered cognitive dissonance? Let's take a closer look at the tone of his voice to get a better understanding. When he makes the question of just moving, he sounds like what he's saying has 100% truth to it. And it does make sense to the people that want to move away from areas that are dangerous to live in. However, I don't think this is considered cognitive dissonance because Shapiro doesn't really realize yet that there's an argument that contrasts with his statements and is easily just as sensical to whatever he said. I think the cognitive dissonance denotes that you already have to be aware of the contrasting arguments rather than be unaware yet. It's like those moments when you're in a chess game and you find yourself not being able to move your knight anywhere because it's just a lose-lose situation wherever you go. You feel confused and assuming you want to move that knight, you have to stick to one decision or another. And when the move is over and you get stomped by your opponent, you might still want to say that moving that knight to f6 was still the correct play rather than g5. There's still one more example I want to go through before coming to a conclusion. It comes from a climate fiction story called Hermie by Nathaniel Rich, and it's about an ocean biologist who ends up talking to his former imaginary hermit crab friend Hermie. Hermie reminds the narrator of all the good times playing on the beach when they were little, but at this point, the narrator seems to be apathetic to Hermie's excitement and presence of nostalgia. The story contains a lot of rhetorical value and lessons to learn, but the most important part about the story for this video is that Hermie is not necessarily another character the narrator faces. Hermie is a social construction created by the narrator's own thoughts. This means that throughout the story, the narrator faces his own feelings about his life his own thoughts, and his own actions. He argues and goes against his optimistic thoughts, eventually becoming apathetic to Hermie, representing his past for more hopeful thoughts about climate change. It is pretty evident that the narrator is experiencing cognitive dissonance, since both Hermie and the narrator's thoughts are the same person's thoughts. There is something unsettling about not wanting to be associated with the person you were once in the past and being unable to accept that part of yourself. The narrator ends up feeling like he had to stick to one side of his behavior to break up his ideological differences, and it is unfortunate that he leaves who he was behind. Speaking of sticking to one side, I think that's a good topic to end this video on. I'm guessing that an underlying and important assumption is being made when it comes to cognitive dissonance, which is that we must stick to one side, since one way of believing and behaving is wrong, while the other is presumably correct. But it all begs the question, do we have to stick to one side of the argument? Is it really correct that one side is correct and one side isn't? Who's to say that we have to change if the way we live and what we think is disliked by other people? And in the discussion of climate change,
Is it alright to not care about it? There's a lot of irony in this world. You know the quote that goes, do as I say, not as I do? You know that's so true because so many people have trouble staying consistent with their beliefs. It goes to all the times your parents always say that you should eat healthier when you are a small kid, but all the food they made and bought was utter garbage. Or all the angry business managers yelling at you not to yell back at them. Heck, I'm majoring in environmental engineering at UCI right now, yet I don't have any second thoughts about picking up trash at and waste while walking on the streets. But what I can conclude from taking a look at cognitive dissonance is that there are times where people aren't perfect. We are not perfect, and that's a part of life. Now yeah, that's about forgiving others and ourselves for the things we've done wrong and for all the times people messed up. If we all decided to harshly judge each other for all of our ironies and never forgive anyone, nobody would want to talk or be with anyone else. And going back to our discussion of climate change, the people who care about climate change would still blame the people who don't even though we as individual people don't have the agency to create such major change. All the meanwhile, the people who don't care about climate change blame the people who do, since progress isn't being made about the issue. And now it's made out to be that climate deniers are just villains who want this earth to implode, which is not correct. The thing is that some people just don't care enough about it in the short run. And it's okay not to care about climate change. And maybe others want to go against the grain, which is also fine. You know, climate deniers shouldn't have to face such harsh criticism, even though the vast majority of people believe that climate change is something that needs to be addressed. You know, it's okay to just leave those people be, since this is not about, and has never been about, good and bad guy. You know, let it be okay that people don't believe it you know and understand where people come from and forgive people for not being correct all the time you know as much as i do that we all have our own perfections to short out but even still we can be around others because we forgive and we accept our differences with the innate understanding that no side of a controversial topic is necessarily right or wrong we can learn more about what we disagree with and gain more perspective on what the world means to us today.